one. Welcome everyone to Every Woman Empowered's Chick Chit Chat. And I am your host, Shauna J. Cerniak, the founder of Every Woman Empowered. And today we have our co-hosts. Jani Galarno, international artist and resident artist of Every Woman Empowered. Neela Janu, certified laughter yoga instructor and founder of Let's Laugh Yag and happiness ambassador for Every Woman Empowered. And today our special guest is Jamie Soleil. She was born in Calgary and raised in Red Deer, Alberta. She began skating at an early age and moved into Paris figure skating by age 12. Saleh teamed up with her first partner in 1989 and competed in the 1994 Olympics in Lillehammer, Norway and finished 12th overall. Then in 1998, Saleh paired up with her partner, David Peltier, and had a short but dynamic four-year amateur career together. Saleh and Peltier became the first pair to win Worlds held in Canada since 1984 and were also awarded the Lou Marshall Trophy as an Outstanding Canadian Athletes. Saleh and Peltze won gold at the 2012 Olympics in Salt Lake City, a huge accomplishment as Canada had not earned an Olympic gold medal since 1960 in figure skating. Following their Olympic win, Saleh and Peltier began touring with Stars on Ice and were inducted into the Skate Canada Hall of Fame in 2008 and the Olympic Hall of Fame in 2009. Later that year, Saleh began her first season in the CBC's Battle of the Blades, where she was paired with former NHL hockey player Craig Simpson. The duel went on to win the competition in 2009 and then married in 2012. Saleh is an advocate for special needs and has worked with the Special Olympic Movement for over six years. Jamie is a transformational coach and a speaker helping people live the life that they love. Please help me welcome Jamie Saleh. Yay! Um, so Hi, glad ladies. to have you. Oh, well, it's a pleasure. Thank you. How are you all doing today? Excellent. We're excellent. Good. So I just learned a, a really interesting fun fact about you today, uh, and I didn't realize this. You were in Will Ferrell's movie, The Blades of Glory, and you did the stunts for that movie. Like, tell me, what was it all about? And, and like, how did you, how did it come to be, and how was it working with Will? That's a cool, uh, great question. Um, I get asked that a lot. So David and I were actually, uh, it happened when we were touring with Stars on Ice and we were doing a, I believe it was like a 64 city tour and we had a, a break, a four day break at one point um, and they had asked the tour, they said, we know you have some pair teams on your, sh on your show, would we be able to borrow them to uh, participate in the movie Blades of Glory? We want to use them as like uh, the competition. So we were all really honored and they bust us uh, to LA and um, we filmed in an arena, very, very cold. And the first thing uh, that I asked was, well, are we gonna meet everybody? And they said, no, sorry, you're not going to meet anybody. Aww. So Aww. Los Angeles, right? Um, but we, you know, we, we had fun that day, but it was really challenging because the first thing they said to all of us was that we need you guys to look bad. Like we need you to make mistakes. And we're like, um, well, we've never really been asked that before. So this will be interesting. Um, so. You know, each of us, we uh, took turns going out on the ice and um, they said, well, can you and David like fall? And I said, well, fall on what? Like, do you know how dangerous that is? Like we, we, we're on tour right now. We can't afford to get in. Exactly. So um, it was just simple things, but even like a death spiral and having Dave fall or a pair spin, can you sort of like slip out of it and make it look like you made a mistake or something? And so we, we did the best we could, but it was really, I mean, it's kind of funny. I think we have what, five seconds or three to five seconds of airtime. And uh, in the beginning, it was really funny because we were getting sweet royalties, like hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And I still get checks every quarter, like even for $30. <laughs> wow. Like, it's just a reminder that, you know, you're, you were part of the SAG and, you know, you, you're an actor and, and it was a cool experience. But no, we never got to meet anybody, but we actually watched it. Um, 
with the kids during this whole uh, quarantine time at the very beginning. We're like, why not? Let's watch it. Mommy's on TV. Oh, that is so cool. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> and here I was thinking, you know, you're, you're sitting there with all the rest of the figure skaters. You're all chit-chatting and, you know, having a good old time. You know, you and Will are going off having Thanksgiving uh -huh. together. And <laughs> Never as good as everybody thinks it is. Wow. <laughs> That's too bad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but at least, like you said, you had your few seconds of fame. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and you were asked to do something that as figure skaters would be like a huge no-no. It's always about having that perfect routine and not making the mistakes, right? Yeah, exactly. So. It was a very different kind of request. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> yep. Well, Jamie, this is going to air Canada Day. And uh, I got a chance to watch your my, hashtag my Canadian moment. Mm -hmm. And it just, it made me tear up. It gave me goosebumps. Can you kind of... Tell us what makes you just so proud to be Canadian and what do you love about Canada? Oh, well, I'll just reiterate that story. It was really incredibly special and this is what makes me proud to be Canadian is the fact that, um, you know, we're very humble people in general and, um, you know, we talk about patriotism and, and we often see it as very uh, obnoxious at times, but I feel like Canadians are quietly patriotic. Um, and this was an example of that. And, and David and I were awarded the silver medal the first night we skated in Salt Lake in 2002. <laughs> um, and, uh, and these people from Calgary were just sitting back going, well, that's not okay. Let's show our pride for their hard work. And we don't feel this is right. So they decided that they were going to collect gold from people across Canada, anybody that wanted to donate their, their jewelry. And, uh, so when we came home from the Olympics, we did get a gold medal from the Olympic Games. But this, I know this presentation meant even more to us. We uh, we were doing our homecoming show, and so they said, "Well, we just want to take you know a few minutes of your time during intermission." And so we're standing in a room with these people, and we open these boxes, and I was just bawling. And I I said, "Like, how did you do this?" And they said, "Well, you know, even back then, the internet really wasn't. I don't even know. Um, they would have had to have done paper and radio." To, in 2002 still. So um, they worked really hard. And you guys, if you could only see the medals, they're, they're like hardy. They're not just like a thin piece of right. gold paper kind of thing. They're, they're gorgeous. Um, and not only are they more beautiful than the Salt Lake medals, they're extremely sentimental to David and I because they're made by the citizens of Canada. Like the people yeah. of our country came together and said, let's give them you know, our jewelry, like it's literally oh. pieces, rings, watches, earrings, anything. And uh, so that was a very emotional thing, uh, presentation and um, sentiment. And I just said like this just totally, um, it's, it's just so Canadian. It wouldn't happen anywhere else. I've never heard of this story before, or, um, any other country doing this. And uh, unfortunately, the story wasn't told enough. But I'm really happy that, you know, I get to actually tell this over and over again now because I just feel like more Canadians need to know about this. And we always come together as a country. It's even through this whole COVID yeah. time, I feel that there's so much more love in Canada and everybody is um, really standing up for that and supporting yes. it more than ever. And uh, so I just, you know what I love the most is just um, Canadians are kind. And uh, in yeah. general, <laughs> you know, I just think when we travel, there's a reason why the rest of the world likes us. And there's a reason why even some people down south wear, wear Canada flags on their jackets or their backpacks because they want to be known as Canadian. And, right. you know, right. that's, that's, uh, that's no accident. And Canadians are wonderful people. Right. Yep. They are. Absolutely. Yes, we are. <laughs> Oh, okay. It's kind of hard to be like uh, serious after that, but I, I'm going to try. Um, <laughs> Jamie, did you find it hard to reinvent yourself after leaving professional ice skating? Mm, yeah, that's a really how was that adjustment? Mm, so it was it was an adjustment. I actually thought I was happy to retire because I was getting married again, and uh, we were talking about having another baby, and because I had. Jesse, my son. And so I was really excited about the, the new 
path that I was on. And so the first three years after retirement, um, I was enjoying my life. I really was like, oh, this is like, just enjoy the fruits of my labor and, and just do whatever I want, you know? And actually one of my goals, one of my dreams, two of my dreams were to have a family. And the other one was to be able to stay at home with my kids. And so here I was living that. But then after a short time of after our daughter came, it was about a year later where I was just sitting here going, it might have even been a little bit longer, but it, it was, she was a toddler and I was just going like, I am, I'm grateful for my family, but there's something inside of me that's, it's stirring up and it's not happy. Like I was waking up kind of, and the word I used was pissy. Like I was irritable and like I was snapping at things that I wouldn't normally snap at. Um, so then I went for help because that's what I do when I'm, when I'm not comfortable with myself. <laughs> um, and I just realized after 10 minutes of talking with this, this uh, beautiful person that I, I had stopped dreaming and, um, wow. and I'm not serving my bigger purpose, my greater purpose. Yeah, skating was one part of my life, but there's another something for this next chapter yeah. of your life. And I thought, well, geez, isn't that interesting? Because I thought this is what it was going to be. But no, I was just kind of living my life at that point by, by default instead of design. And I had designed my life my whole, the whole, my whole life. So, um, here I was not doing that anymore and it lasted for a little bit, but then all of a sudden I was breaking down. So, um, all I could write down in my, in my vision was help people. And, um, that really, I didn't understand necessarily what that meant in the big picture because I, I work with special Olympic athletes. Um, and I love, love that. Um, they light me up. Those athletes are my favorite. Mm -hmm. But I just knew there was something even bigger. And I was going, okay, I don't know what it is. And she said, you know, don't worry about that right now. Just as long as you get things on paper, because we all know when we have thoughts in our head, it's just a wish. But we get it on paper, it becomes a plan. And yeah. I know from my skating days, I wrote everything down. And so here I am again, um, writing this down. And two weeks later, I was at a vision workshop and I just went, this is exactly what I want to do. I want to help people internationally and I want to share my story and I want to be more, I want to be more enlightened. I want to help. I just want to help people and, and, and know yeah. that they're not alone and that what they're going through is completely normal. And I've been through it too. And as a matter of fact, mm -hmm. I'm probably one of the most relatable people, you know, I've been through it all. You asked me. <laughs> right. Like, so that transition, um, where I'm at today, where I've transformed from is, is uh, incredible for me, but it was um, an interesting one to say the least, because I thought, I thought I wanted one thing, and then I'm here today doing something completely different. Isn't that amazing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, you That's know what? pretty it's, cool. And I, and I have to be, tell everybody too, that I was afraid to dream big. Again, I, I was really limiting myself because I thought, well, that's, that can't happen. I'm, I'm married now and I have two kids and well, that's never going to happen. The economy's shit or whatever. Like I was just like all kinds of reasons why I can't do things. And I'm like, no, stop. When you were 10, you didn't think like this. So don't think no. like that now. And so I reminded myself, you're going to put down exactly what you envision for yourself. And it's not about achieving that goal. It's about the person you become on the journey. Like exactly. you all know, we all watch athletes and we know how hard it is to actually make it. And, yeah. you know, it's in figure skating at, at a gold medal Olympic level, it's like less than 1%. So same thing with hockey. And so I'm, I'm, I'm one of the fortunate ones, but like this next chapter for me, it's not about becoming, you know, the most amazing, the best um, motivator in the world. It's just, I have high, big goals, but I know that it's all of these, um, the challenges and the journey on the way and the lessons that I yeah. get in the journey that are going to make me the person that I ultimately want to be. So Absolutely. that's what, right. And so yeah. I'm aware of that. And so I just, I love what I do now love. And, um, yeah, it's when you, it's like they always say, when you find something you love, you never work a day in your life. <laughs> nope. Yeah, that's true. Actually, not at all. <laughs> yes. Jamie, talking about big life changes, I learned that you started following a plant-based diet. What sparked that for you? Yeah, interesting one. So it was, um, it'll be three years this September, and I, um, I was starting to have really irregular uh, menstrual cycles. I was um, having, I used to be completely regular, like normal, every 28-day cycle. 
And then it's okay to talk about this. <laughs> oh yeah, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. It's just us girls. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, well, because a lot of women will relate to this. Absolutely. Um, my mom and my stepmom both were like, ah, oh, when I did this. Um, I'll tell you why. So what happened was I was getting two periods. I started spotting in between my cycle. And then all of a sudden I started having two periods a month. And my friends um, were saying, this is not normal, but I, I, my doctor sent me to a specialist and they said, Jamie, we're going to, you're going to have an ablation or a hysterectomy because this is just, and he just said to me, it's just normal. It's just what it is. And it's, that's how we're going to treat you medically. And I'm like, okay. So I came home and told my friends who were plant-based and they said, Jamie, you got to try being plant-based first because they explained the whole thing to me that typically w why this happens, it's not the only reason, but typically, or they were guessing at least for me that I, um, I had stored uh, hormones in my gut and I needed to heal my gut. So it turned out they were right, actually. I actually had leaky gut and I, I also had Hashimoto's because um, I'm on uh, Synthroid for my thyroid, but I also had Hashimoto's, I had leaky gut, I had all these issues. So I went plant-based, wow. not very happily. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I will I will preface it that I was I wasn't eating dairy because I'm I'm lactose intolerant. Like you don't want to be in the same room with me if I <laughs> good to know. It's <laughs> and uh, I know people can laugh at that because it's it's real, right? When you're lactose yep. the majority of us are actually. And so I wasn't eating dairy and I ate very little meat to start with. So um it wasn't massive change, but in my head it was like you're asking me to what? Like I can't have that now and I, I don't eat dairy. And, I, and then, then it became a gluten thing. I'm like, oh my God, I can't eat anything. Like, and I remember them all saying, well, focus on what you can eat. I'm going, yeah, that's great. But I'm eating broccoli and cauliflower and like salad right? Um, and nuts. Anyway, so then I went plant-based. I watched uh, What the Health was the first documentary I watched and I was mortified. Uh, and, then I, and then I listened to the audio book of How Not to Die. I was like, okay, I'm done. And so I, uh, that's when I, I went cold, literally, no pun intended, cold turkey, cut out <laughs> everything. And uh, two weeks later, I never got a period. I was like, all right. Uh, and I was marking it because I wanted to see how well this worked. I went that month, 26 days. So then the next wow. month, this is not going to work again. Like, there's no way. I went 27 days. The next month was 28 days. And from that day on, it's been 28 day cycle. And so wow. I'm going to share with you ladies why. So we don't talk about poop. Um, women don't talk about bowel movements very much or at all. And, and I know that everyone listening is like, oh, Jamie, this is real. I know so it is real. Who, who don't have regular bowel movements or they go every day, but they're not going enough. And I know I thought I was healthy because I went every day. I was athlete, I was active, I was eating lots of fiber, I was even drinking a fiber drink, like I was trying everything. You're a very and, healthy woman at, to start with. Yeah. And, and I just thought because I went every day, I was good. Well, I'll tell you what, you don't know what going is until you're plant-based. Oh. <laughs> like, like seriously, um, and this is a conversation I've never had with anybody on TV or anything before, but it's like, I don't know that because like, it's, it's, it's honestly like shocking because you see what comes out of you. And I'm like, well, that's why I was storing all these hormones in my gut. My body was screaming at me going, you're not like, it's not good. Right. And so as soon as I cut out the little meat that I did, um, this is my story, by the way, it's not everybody's story. It's my personal story. It worked for me. Um, I can't imagine going back the other way. Um, and now I've just even become more even aware of how it's affecting our planet. And like, oh, Shauna, you've, you said that you watched the show, uh, the game changers, yes. like it, it's shocking. And, um, we've been, uh, we've been sort of, um, I don't want to say brainwashed, but I grew up thinking that, and even as an athlete, I was told I needed it, the animal protein to, to be healthy, yes. to stay lean and to have energy. Well, yeah, we were definitely I, led to believe that, that that's was, where you yeah. get your energy from. Yes. And I said, if I, and I was always told that if I just ate veggies, um, I would never have energy and even potentially put on weight because when you eat veggies, you crave more, more carbs and stuff. So I, I've been plant-based now for two and a half years. I've never felt better. I healed. I do not have Hashimoto's. That's an autoimmune disease that I was told I was going to live with for the rest of my life. I don't wow. have it anymore. 
And um, my blood work is like, my doctor's going, this is like, it's epic. Um, you know, I struggle with hormone stuff now, but that has nothing to do with my gut. My gut's healthy. Um, you know, but we're all going to go through change as we get older. I'm 43. I think I'm getting close to perimenopause here. So here we go. So exciting. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, but in general, like never felt better. And, um, yeah, I just, I highly recommend even trying it and even just a, a couple few days a week and see how you feel. Yeah, yeah. There are phenomenal things about it. And I know just even from watching that documentary, I, I have not gone totally plant based, but I have eliminated a fair amount of, of meats in my diet. And, you know, yeah. usually just chicken is my occasional yeah. steak, but, uh, what I learned was just phenomenal. It really was. Read the book, How Not to Die, and uh, you will have a different perspective on chicken. <laughs> just like you said, Jamie. Like it's what just, about fish? Not, <laughs> I know. Trust, trust me, I, 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 I don't shame anybody for eating meat at all. Like, everybody has their own journey. It's right. just like when you start understanding, um, and I actually support the local farmers myself. Like I, I always bought locally. I think it's just better, better quality. Yeah. So if you are going to do that, I highly recommend going that direction. Um, but, uh, yeah, when you start understanding about these animals, you're like, Ooh, okay. So yeah, yeah just, you know, just, and you know what I did was that I, I, I'm not gullible. So what I did was I just gave myself a bunch of information and I decided what was best for me. Right. That's the yeah. best route to go. Absolutely. Uh, and just not focusing on what you can't have, like you said, but just slowly adding more plant-based into your week. I find it makes a world of difference, even just adding a little bit at a time like that. For your gut anyway, right? Mm -hmm. Right. We all know yep. that. And doctors are aware of that even now, as much as they don't know a lot about nutrition they're becoming more aware of that our Canada food guide even cut back on all that stuff. Yes. So, right. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. And I think right now with COVID and everything, um, people are, are, are now more eating at home, uh, doing yes. recipes, being more mindful of allergies or uh, food sensitivities and, and just kind of taking that time versus always yeah. going out to eat. Right. So yeah. or I just grab a big bag of chips. That's what I did. Yeah. <laughs> You sound like my husband. <laughs> I don't know. What, it was kind of like this whole period has been like comfort, right? Like, what can what can we do to be comforted? Like, I I eat chips probably once a month before, and I was eating them every day almost. It was just terrible for about a month, and then I was like, okay, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> You're good now. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, like in these turbulent times, I mean, COVID-19 has been quite an interesting process for most of us. Mm -hmm. What's been your biggest challenge for you and your family during this? Um, I think the biggest challenge has been for the kids, uh, not being social. Our brains are... Yeah. Our brains are wired for, our, our brains are all about survival and they're very social, even if you're an introvert. Um, and I think for all of us, that's been the hardest thing is, is it's being told we can't, you know, like yep. home and, and we were, um, my husband especially is taking, I mean, I do take this seriously too, but he's like, he's really strict about it um, to the point where it's like, even now he'd prefer not to be hugging still and, and, and really socializing with very many people but at this point it's like if you play with one person and they've played with six other people it's like we're all intermixing anyway um and we have to learn to live with this this isn't going to be going away in six no. months so you know and and i think the challenge was really just keeping the kids occupied and busy and you know i tried all kinds of things in the beginning with you know doing a schedule and that went out the window after a week just because my son's back and forth and then my daughter started sleeping in and I'm like, I'm not going to wake her up. We just want everyone to be happy right now. Right. So yeah. but we just, as the we use the word pivoted, right. We were all pivoting and um, navigating through this as, as best we could. But I, I, we all had our moments. Like there were, there would be tears some days. It was like, what's, what's wrong. Well, it's not really like anything's wrong with us. We're all grateful for the, our home and our backyard and um, yeah. each other and we love each other. But 
they were missing their friends. They were missing the socialized mm -hmm. school and even their, their activities. So that was the biggest challenge for us, I would say. Um, yeah, because as, as an adult, I was enjoying a lot of that. I enjoyed having them here and spending that time with them. And I was doing more work like you're doing. And um, I actually got busier. So I was having fun. Um, yeah, I was okay with it. <laughs> And, you know, it's, it's a bit weird not to be able to have your friends over and, and just be like relaxed. It's yes. more like yeah. sit there, sit there, sit there and everybody bring your own thing. But you know what? You just like, we keep talking about, instead of focusing on all the not good stuff, focus on what you can do. Um, yeah. And that helps a lot. For sure. So Jamie, now that you've uh, transitioned into being a coach, you're a dream builder coach and a life master mastery consultant um how would someone go about booking a, a strategic uh, session with you um and what exactly would that entail sure yeah so i have a website jamiesoleil.com and that is where people can reach out to me or they can direct message me on any of my um social media pages so i'm on linkedin instagram facebook um and obviously my website I said and I have I have a YouTube page too but you can message me on social media or my email or my website sorry and because my email is there and so a strategic session is really like I call it I like saying it's strategic but it's a discovery session about what each client is wanting um, to get out of working with me what are they looking for uh, I have all kinds of clients I have people that are really actually quite successful in business um, but they're struggling in one area of their life and they feel that they really want to, um, you know, up their game in a certain aspect of their life. And um, they know that there's greater abundance out there and they just want more. Um, and then I've got people who are at rock bottom and are really struggling in all facets of their life. I have, and then all in between. So everybody just comes to me with different needs or wants. And so we talk about that. I have two programs that I offer. One is 12 weeks. That's the Dream Builder program. And one is 24 weeks, um, six months. And that's Life Mastery. And that's just a deeper dive. So some people really feel that they, they need more work. They need to be immersed in this a little bit longer. But Dream Builder is such a, a wonderful program. It's the one that I did um, three years ago. And um, it's a great foundation for visioning and understanding the process of visioning. It's great to create a vision, but if you don't decide for it and you don't learn to overcome your fears and if you don't work on forgiveness, there's so many different yep. topics. And so it's powerful. It's really powerful. And um, I just get lit up every time I, I work with my clients because I see such transformation from sometimes it's as quick as, you know, we get to week three and they're making major changes. Sometimes it's not until towards the end and all of a sudden there's this big wow moment and then we all celebrate. But the whole time I work with my clients, we're focusing on the wins and, and it's little baby steps, right? You just thought about taking massive steps every day. Like we have to also recognize that whether it's COVID or not, um, some days can be challenging. So getting out of bed is a win. And so if that's what like, you know, I know people that struggle with uh, SAD, S-A-D, right? With a seasonal affective disorder. Um, and it's super gray. I'm pointing outside because it's super gray and pouring rain all day. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty yucky. So on a day like today, it's you always ask yourself, what can I do today to take actions towards my, my dream? And if today is, I'm out of bed, I'm just going to do some writing. Or today I'm out of bed, I'm going to make a phone call. It's, it's not always as big as we think it needs to be. Um, mm -hmm. But what people learn is they they actually gain so much more awareness around the things that they've been doing and the behaviors that they've had and why they why they're acting the way they're acting but also that it's coming from their thinking so our thinking causes our feelings physiology changes that and then our feelings create our actions so if you're not feeling great or you're stressed out you're not going to take action properly or in the, in the way that you know you can and therefore that leads to your results right, right? So if we learn to change our thinking, which is that whole 12 weeks or 24 weeks, then uh, you have incredible change. Oh, I can imagine. I can mm -hmm. totally imagine. Yeah, it's fun. When, when you really dive down and, and really go deep, it's amazing, you know, once you start to mm -hmm. you know, tear away from the, that base and start to rebuild what can come from it. And it's, I just think that's great what you're doing and helping others. That's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. I love it so much. Yes. So we're going to go to some really fun questions now. Okay. So here, I don't know what you got for your answers, but I'm anxious to hear. Um, okay. I, I have a really, really important one. Are you ready? I'm ready. If you were a flavor of ice cream, what flavor would you be and why? Bubble gum. Um, oh! Because and why? Um, well, I'm imagining bubble. I know it's blue, but it's very colorful. Yeah. And I'm very. I'm a very colorful person, um, and I'm a very a person who thrives on laughter and joy. And uh, I just, I think color, I think color. So, I mean, even like, I think sorbet, but I don't know why, because you said ice cream, so I'm saying bubble gum. <laughs> yeah, good answer. And she's juicy, it. she's juicy to boat. <laughs> yeah. And I'm expected too, because often when we think of bubble gum, we think pink, but right. it's blue. It is blue. It is blue, and, and I love blue. That's one of my favorite colors, but I, I know that there's color in there. So when I when I look at when I think of a color palette of ice cream, um, I don't know why. I just funny that you asked me that, and I right away went to bubble gum. <laughs> good one. That was a good one. Okay. Thank you. Okay, my fun question. So JV, watching skaters growing up, I always wondered if they cared whether their skirt was flying up and their bottoms were showing. And I always wondered what happens if you get a wedgie mid skate. Yeah. You got wedgies. <laughs> <laughs> infamous wedgie. <laughs> yeah, infamous wedgie. And you'd be watching. I know all of the people that would watch go would be like, oh my God, when is she going to pick it out? When is she going to take it out? <laughs> <laughs> but, and, and, then, and then I will tell you, it's extremely uncomfortable and it's super hard to focus because you can feel it the whole time. And I, it would always happen to me right after my triple twist. And I'd be, and Dave would catch me, and he because of he's pulling up, he catches me, but I like slip between his arms, kind of, and it pulls my dress oh. up. And I'd be like, whoop! <laughs> and, and, uh, I'm going, All right, I'm going into my double axle now, and I've got to, you know. But then, I don't know. We were <laughs> we were trained to ignore it, and just like, and we we asked our dressmakers always to make our panties bigger than, mm -hmm. than we normally do, because or we normally make them because. We needed that extra coverage just so when we did things like triple twists or throws or whatever that it would stay oh my god stay in place <laughs> so I, I know inquiry minds really want to know what are you doing with that gold medal and do you occasionally maybe walk around the house just wearing the gold medal and nothing else because i know if i had it i sure would everybody says, <laughs> she would everybody says that naked naked <laughs> naked with just the gold medal like yeah. Oh, I wear it on wow. my sometimes too, you know, before COVID, it was like my jewelry. I would just, you know, I would shorten, shorten the back and I would make it longer. I would wear it as a brooch. You know, you know what? It's funny you ask that. Um, well, my really special one that Canada made us is, is uh, hiding. It's in a safety deposit box. It's super precious. I can't lose that one. Um, and the yeah. other one is displayed in, in our, our uh, basement, actually, at the bar. It's just sitting up with my mom dried my flowers from the evening of our skate. Aww. Aww. Yeah, they were yellow roses. And so she dried those for me. And I've got them in a vase with my metal sitting above it and a Salt Lake City plaque. I just have a little bit of a display. I don't have very much. Um, I mean, I've got this picture behind me, but I don't have, like, just my metal and, and the flowers are together. And... Cute. That's what that is. So people, when they come over, they can look at it. And of course we do storytelling, like everyone wants to know about it, but yeah, no, you <laughs> gold, gold wears off by the way. So if you take it around and people are handling it, it actually comes off because it's, oh. it's just plated. Plated, yeah. Okay. Oh. All the oils from people's sticky fingers. Yeah. yeah. My Canadian one. No, not your Canadian one. No, uh, that one you want definitely. That's a lighter, duty. that one. Yeah. That's the real deal, man. Yeah, exactly. Hey, Canada! Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That one you can walk around naked with all the time if you wanted to. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jamie, I gotta say thank you so much for being part of our, our show today. We're we're already at the end and time just flew with you. You've been so accommodating to us and so wonderful and mm -hmm. and we got to know more about you than we could have ever possibly imagined. So <laughs> 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 Well, 
Well, thank you for sharing. Yes, yes. have a great count of the day, and thanks for being a part of our show. Take thank care. You so much, thank you, Jamie. Thank you.